Okay, it seems the document camera is behaving very well right now, so maybe I'll try to knock out an extra video um, before I call it quits for the day. We started by generating an electrophile, electrophile, so that we can do an electrophilic aromatic substitution. So when we generated the electrophile, we had sulfuric acid plus nitric acid and through protonation of the nitric acid and loss of water, we got the very electrophilic NO2 plus. We created some water as well. And we're gonna get a counter on the hydrogen sulfate, which is fairly inert. It's not very basic, not very nucleophilic. So that's just gonna kick around. Now that we have this NO2 plus, that is very reactive and can react with things that are aromatic or have the six-membered ring with three double bonds. Toluene is the common name for what we might call methylbenzene if we wanted a more systematic name for it. Uh, people are always going to call it toluene. And so we have a six-membered ring with three double bonds in there and then a CH3 hanging off the ring. So there's toluene. And in our mechanism, a lot of times it's really helpful to show these atoms, the hydrogens, because that's going to be an important part of the mechanism. The very reactive NO2 plus has a nitrogen that's formally positive, right? It's double bonded to both oxygens and is essentially electron deficient because it's positively charged. Now this makes it so good of an electrophile. So an electrophile loves electrons that it's even gonna go after the pi electrons in an aromatic group or a phenyl ring. So, and the way we draw it is those electrons going and forming a bond to the nitrogen. Now, nitrogen can't obey, disobey the octet rule. It can't valence expand. So if we push a pair of electrons in and make an attachment to the nitrogen, we're gonna have to move this pair of electrons off onto the oxygen so that the nitrogen continues to obey the octet rule. So here we go, we're gonna, now, where this attaches, and we're not gonna get into this in this part of the course, but the nitrate group or the nitro group is going to attach to a carbon that's next to the methyl group or across from it. It's not gonna be in one of these positions. So if this pair of electrons goes and after the nitrogen, it's gonna cause a bond to this carbon. So that's the regiospecificity, as they say. Where does the incoming group attach? It's gonna be very important. It's predictable with more theory, but for right now, I'll just tell you that this pi bond is going away and turning into a sigma bond to the NO2 group and as the bond formed to the nitrogen it had to push a lone pair double bond became a lone pair put a formal minus charge here because the nitrogen cannot disobey the octet rule so here we end up with the nitro group attached to carbon next to the carbon that has the methyl. And now since these electrons move towards this carbon, this carbon ends up being electron deficient, and ends up being a carbocation. And normally what we might expect is this carbocation would be very electrophilic and would bond, something would bond to it and we'd have an addition reaction. But in this reaction, What's more favorable is to reform what's called the aromatic group. The three double bonds in the ring is very stable. 
And so we're going to try to reform this double bond. And we do that by substitution. So remember, this is an electrophilic aromatic substitution. And a substitution means we add one thing and then we take something else off. So we substitute rather than add addition reaction, we added two things. If we remember this is a substitution reaction, we know now we've added the nitro group, we're going to take this hydrogen off. So what ends up happening is the water could be one of the nice things that comes in as a base and goes ahead and grabs that H plus off. And then this bonding pair of electrons can go in and reform that pi bond, regenerating the aromatic group. So six membered ring still there. Methyl is just hanging out on the toluene. And one of the things that I don't really have to do, but if I drew the hydrogens and all the carbons, my first picture, to make it easier to follow, I should probably copy that all here. So we had hydrogens and these carbons. This hydrogen was just plucked off. So it ended up being replaced or substituted by this nitro group. And watch the formal charges. You don't want to leave those guys off. And now you reformed the pi bond to make this an aromatic group again. The six-membered ring with three double bonds in it is aromatic. So now we have mononitro. And I don't have to say the mono, but mononitro toluene should sound sort of familiar to you because trinitrotoluene is TNT. So we can continue doing this. So two times NO2 plus reaction more would give us TNT. So there we go. That's a two-step mechanism for the substitution reaction, electrophilic aromatic substitution First, we have the electrophile react with the toluene, which makes this the nucleophile. This is going for the positive charge. This is going for the negative charge, that pair of electrons. That creates this intermediate, where the nitro is added to the carbon. And then we have to remove the hydrogen to allow this double bond to reform. And that leads to our product, the nitro toluene. So there we go. A little complicated electrophilic aromatic substitution. If you have trouble understanding it, watch videos a few times. Try to write out the mechanisms on your own. And ask any questions if you need to.